Hey folks, John Becker here, Union Township trustee and former state representative from Claremont County, bringing to you the January issue of the Becker Report. And here's a draft I'm uh, hoping to get out uh, tonight. And today is January 29th, 2022. And my contact information is at the end of this video. Make sure you subscribe to the Becker Report. And that uh, you can find that at beckergop.com. You can email me at, and this is a new email address, email me at um, beckergop at fuse.net. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's also Becker GOP. So in the January issue, the, the, the item I lead with is um, the, the uh, Central Committee. So this is the time of year uh, in, in Claremont County. It's once every four years you have the opportunity to get on the Central Committee. So you need, you need to get a form. Uh, you can get this online. You can get it from me. You can get it from the Board of Elections. It's called a 2L. You would circulate it in your precinct. Give me a call if you want information on you know what's a precinct and how to do all this stuff. And uh, my number, uh, just give me a call, 513-753-6440. And again, you can get that information at the end of this video. Hey, so this is due on Wednesday, February the 2nd, to get it down to the Board of Elections uh, prior to, uh, I want to say it's 4 o'clock is the deadline. But you can call them and they can answer any questions for you as well. So, uh, the, again, I, I encourage people to get on the Central Committee. Also, State Central Committee is uh, up for uh, re-election. Uh, same thing. It's a different form. I think it's called, a, I want to say, a 2J, something like that. And, again, the uh, Claremont County Board of Elections can take care of that for you. And uh, wherever else you are in the state, uh, the Central Committee, State Central Committee seats are, are every two years, and they're by Senate District. So if you want information on that, again, uh, give me a call or give your uh, local Board of Elections a call and they can help you out and get you uh, everything you need. The other thing I have on here is uh, that this is the 49th anniversary of uh, Roe v. Wade. And, uh, you know, the, the, the pro-life pro -life issue is something uh, near and dear to my heart. It's, uh, there is no issue more important to me than that. Uh, there's like 63 and a half million babies that uh, have been killed. Uh, that's a third of a generation since 1973, and uh, I'm uh, certainly looking forward to this coming to an end, and hopefully it will be soon. I go to Washington, D.C. for the Right to Life March uh, every 10 years. It's on the, uh, the, the 10th, uh, each 10th anniversary, so I've been there in uh, 83, 93, 03, 13, and every 10 years I hope I never have to go back. So uh, January of 23 would be uh, my due date to go back every 10 years and uh, hopefully this uh, travesty of justice will be over soon. You know, I'm a, I'm a believer in uh, you know, the death penalty and uh, executions after due process of law and whenever I get asked about the hard cases like rape and incest, yeah, it's a hard case. My heart uh, goes out to uh, the victims of that. But if there has to be an execution, I say, uh, you know, you execute the, the criminal. Don't execute the innocent child. So uh, also then I get into uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Stephen Breyer has uh, decided to uh, retire. And uh, no surprise on that. And President Biden gets to uh, um, nominate a uh, person to replace him. What is interesting about this is uh, his, his pledge to... Uh, only consider black women. So, uh, you know, it strikes me as being both racist and sexist. So uh, I'm going to read off a, a few uh, um, uh, takeaways from, from that uh, promise of uh, President Biden. So uh, white people need not apply. Hispanic people need not apply. Asian people need not apply. American Indians need not apply. Men need not apply. Transgender people who identify as men need not apply. Transracial people who identify as white or anything other than black need not apply. And uh, I'm wondering who else I'm being, a, or who else uh, the president is discriminating against uh, that I might have missed. There's probably a few other categories as well. So I guess if you're a transracial or a transgender or somebody wanting to go that direction, um, wait till after the, the nomination for Supreme Court because you don't want to disqualify yourself. Uh, only black women or those who identify as such uh, may apply for the job. So also I address the COVID issue uh, to, to a little bit. Some encouraging news on this is, uh, and this is something I've been screaming about from the beginning, 
And it's because I got the experience in the uh, healthcare industry. I worked in uh, insurance uh, back in managed care back in the 90s. And uh, I was one of those data analyst guys. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, clinical, uh, but uh, you know, the finance guy. So I would do the reporting and analysis. And I would frequently run reports on uh, diagnostic codes. Uh, back in the day, those were ICD-9 codes. I think in today's world, there are ICD-10 codes. And we would have a primary, secondary, and tertiary. So what that means is if you're in the hospital for you know, perhaps multiple reasons or multiple uh, conditions or di diagnoses, uh, you know, one, one of those would be primary. Then you'd have a, possibly a secondary and poss possibly even a tertiary. So and this gets into the issue with COVID and what they've been lying to us about all these years. And now they're, they're starting to at least uh, to some extent uh, realize uh, uh, that maybe they should start telling the truth. And that, uh, you know, anybody who's, who's uh, in the hospital uh, and coincidentally uh, gets tested for um, COVID, tests positive for it, they're automatically counted as a COVID case. So the example... I give is, uh, you know, so if you're in the hospital for a gunshot wound, you're on life support, uh, you know, you, you, you uh, test positive for COVID, uh, maybe the, t the test is wrong, you didn't even know you had COVID because it's asymptomatic, there are, there are no symptoms, and then, uh, you know, you're on a ventilator, you're in the ICU, eventually you die, all of those are COVID statistics for a gunshot wound to the head, somebody that was otherwise uh, perfectly healthy, at least before the gunshot. So that's the problem with the fraud or part of the problem with the fraud of all this uh, reporting. And speaking of fraud, then we get into the mask uh, debate. And uh, now the, uh, the, uh, the powers that be, the CDC, are talking about the N95s. They're not going as far as to, recognize or to recommend the N95s, but they're, they're saying they are the most effective. Well, no kidding. You know, we know from the CDC's own data, and I link to this, that the best case scenario for regular mass is that uh, it's a less than 2% efficacy rate. That's the best case scenario. That's from the CDC's own statistics. And I, and I, and I link to that. So yeah, if they're serious about uh, wanting people to protect themselves from the virus, the N95 is the way to go. And uh, now they're starting to get those uh, distributed. So that's a, an interesting development. I also get into uh, something I just did a copy and paste off the, the internet is uh, Cheryl uh, Atkinson. She's a um, uh, TV anchor, former anchor, uh, journalist, uh, uh, author, and she came up with uh, what she calls 57 COVID mistakes made by U.S. Uh, public officials. So uh, I linked to that and listed them for your uh, uh, entertainment or enjoyment. And then uh, what I rounded out with on the last page of the, re of the Becker Report is a Union Township restaurant visit. So I'm on a mission to visit every restaurant in Union Township. I don't know how many there is. I imagine there's at least 100, there might be 200, to get uh, breakfast, lunch, uh, dinner, or carry out. And I'm uh, listing what those are. I've got, uh, oh, I think, about 15 of them so far uh, in January. I still may have uh, one or two more before the month is over. But I went ahead and listed them uh, in here, and I might be uh, doing that uh, every month, and I am keeping track on a spreadsheet to, uh, to make sure that I got them all. So while I'm there, typically I'll hand the manager a business card, just stop in and say hi, anything they need from Union Township. You know, I'm from the government, I'm here to help. So the, that's it with uh, the January issue of the Becker Report. So uh, please uh, subscribe and uh, I'll be back next month. Hey, have a great day, bye-bye.